Brian Paisley at UC Berkeley's Helen Wills Neuroscience Institute is working to give our thoughts a voice. We're studying how the brain processes speech and translating brain activity into predicted sounds. We collaborate with a team of neurosurgeons and neurologists. Their job is to treat severe epilepsy in different patients. To monitor epileptic patients' brains, scientists have implanted electrode arrays, networks of sensors which record neural activity. This is an example of an electrode grid that the surgeon implants. Here you're seeing the skull of a patient, and as the camera moves inside of the skull, you can see the actual electrode array that's been implanted on the brain surface. Paisley and his team are using these electrodes to focus on the brain's activity when it hears sounds. When you're listening to a sound, that generates a very specific pattern of activity in the cortex that we can pick up using these electrode arrays. The brain sort of separates sounds into different frequencies. Each of those different frequencies is sort of processed by a slightly different place in the brain. If we can understand that, we can just look at which brain site is becoming active, and that tells us essentially which uh, sound frequency the person is listening to. What I'm going to show you is sort of uh, a representation of uh, the actual word that the patient is listening to. In this case, you're going to hear the word Waldo. So I'll just go ahead and play that. Waldo. As the subject processes a word, Waldo. the implanted electrode array captures their brain activity and relays the data to a computer. Paisley's team uses the computer to decipher what the subject heard. We were accurate enough to decode specific words directly from the measured brain activity. And we could resynthesize the sound and make a guess. In the middle is the guess that we produced. And so we can compare our guess to the actual sound. And that gives us a measure of how accurate our prediction is. This is one step towards, for example, a thought recognition technology in terms of, of actually decoding uh, sounds that are related to thoughts. Paisley's next challenge will explore the upper limits of brain power. By removing sound from the equation and zeroing in on internally verbalized thoughts. Internal verbalization is sort of what you hear in your mind's ear. For example, uh, this internal monologue most of us have. Sometimes you can actually hear your own voice. This internal thought process shares key similarities with how we process external sound. Some of the same brain areas do seem to activate uh, when you're imagining a sound versus when you're actually listening to a sound. Paisley and his team are working towards a day when we can broadcast the words of our inner monologue to the world around us using nothing more than a thought. One potential application of, of this type of research would be a brain implant that could translate their intended speech into external messages that could actually be listened to by other people. Literally harnessing brain power to interact with the external world. Because our brain is electrical, it's also responsive to radio. Computers can now recognize the signature of individual words emitted from the brain. And so the question is, can we use radio, electromagnetic signals, to communicate and control objects to the outside world. That's similar to the forest. Within a few years, we'll simply be controlling objects with the mind, walking into the room, rearranging things, bringing up movies, turning down the volume of a stereo, all of that with the power of the mind.